Jazzcast Pros. We are now officially in season five, which is super exciting. Season four was all about tactical things we can do to grow and improve our business. And season five is mastering the mindset. So it's all about the mindset of business. And today's episode is going to be us acting as if, as if we are the future CEO, the big deal, like we're running multi, multi multi-million dollar businesses, and as if we're having Vogue come in and interview us. So if you've ever seen on YouTube, they have 73 questions asked by Vogue and they're wandering throughout their house. So I thought that I could do something like that today. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the cautiously ambitious woman, remove mental barriers and take action now so that you can achieve your high vibe desires. I'm Rashawn, your high vibe curator, cheerleader, and accountability partner. Today's episode is acting as if Vogue is interviewing me and you're going to get to know all about Mershon. I will put the show note or the questions down in the show notes because I would love to hear your answers. I would love to connect with you on what you found interesting about this episode and what you like to act as if with. Okay, this is going to be sound a little weird, but again, the topic is me and my weird self today. So I'm embracing all of it. One of my favorite things to do is to like see people's pantries I find their pantries really interesting because it tells you a lot about like their staples, like what's important to them and how they feed and nourish their family. It's just very fascinating to me. And I also find it very inspiring. So I'm like, oh, how you have lentils. Like, what do you do with them? Give me some recipes. I digress. Question number one, favorite time of day. This answer actually is recently different. I had a guest on here. She's one of my clients. Her name's Amelia. And I told her the other day that she changed my life because I found this new favorite pocket of the day. And the pocket of the day is the time when you get into the bed before you actually have to fall asleep. For a long time, I would stay up until it was like time to go to bed. And then once I'm in bed, it's like time to fall asleep. And that's the only objective there. And I recently started going to bed a little bit earlier. And so there's time where I'm laying in my nice cozy bed in my PJs and I don't have to be asleep. I really enjoy spending that time reading or journaling or even scrolling TikTok. Like I'm okay with scrolling TikTok during that time. I know screen time right before bed isn't the best, but like it's my time to do what I want. And I have found myself going to bed earlier, like falling asleep earlier, but it's just like this really nice time from the time I get into the bed and I can just do and finish my day out the way that I want it to. So yeah, my biggest weakness is my follow through. I interviewed someone actually earlier today around ADHD. And while there are magical parts of it, there are also things that people struggle with and follow through is a big one. I always say if I were to work with a business partner, they would need to be a dot their I and cross their T's person because that I think is where I fall down the most. My biggest strength. Oof. Let's see. What is my biggest strength? Um, I think my biggest strength is my empathy. I also think that the overflow of our strengths are our weaknesses. Um, And so sometimes my empathy can get the best of me, but I think it is something that has served me very well and I would never want to change about myself. My biggest learning experience, I would never have said this at the time, but being laid off, I think was my biggest learning experience. It was a big shot to my confidence. So I had to figure out on my own how to build that back up. For a long time, I did things based on what others would think of me and how others would view me. You know, one person came up to me at one point we were talking and he was like, wow, you, I, I wish I would have my shit together like you do. And I was like, you think I have my shit together? And I was like always doing things based on how I thought others would perceive me and going through that experience really put into focus that I had to do things for myself that would bring myself joy and would make myself happy and would be important to me and not for other people. So I think that was my biggest learning experience. What makes you angry? Because I get like annoyed at asking my daughter to brush her teeth eight times and it taking 20 minutes, but I wouldn't say that makes me angry. Oh, this is what makes me angry is when... People only care about seeing 
another side of an issue when it severely impacts them. You know, a recent example, and this is going to get political, but like in the state of Georgia, when Georgia Supreme Court made that decision that fertilized eggs had, you know, rights as a being, and then it affected IVF, it affected a lot of fertility clinics. And there was one football coach who was like, this could affect my grandchildren. And it's like, why are you care? So now that it's affecting you and your grandchildren, now you want to think about the flip side of this. That makes me angry. What is advice you wish you could give up? Um, TikTok. (laughs) I find myself in a scroll hole quite often, and that is something that I am trying to manage. What are you most excited about these days? This podcast. I am loving where this podcast is going. I'm really enjoying all the conversations that are coming out of it. The ways it allows me to be creative very freely. I mean, like I can sit down and answer 73 questions about myself because I was inspired to do so. Uh, One of my recent solo episodes, I was a very stream of consciousness, the build something lovely episode, because I was listening to a podcast driving home and I felt really inspired. So this podcast has given me a way to like express that creativity quickly and freely while also learning and having really fucking cool conversations with really fucking cool people. Number eight, best compliment you've ever received. One time my high school volleyball coach Hi, Coach Tuli Jeffers. Told me I was scrappy. I got in the car and I started, I got so upset. I can't remember if I cried. My dad would probably remember. But I told him, I was like, my coach called me scrappy. And he's like, you know, that's a good thing, right? (laughs) And at the time I didn't, um, I didn't know what the word meant. But I think being scrappy has done me well over the years. Thanks, Coach Tuli. Number nine, when are you most inspired? Hmm. Listening to others let their creativity direct them, I think, is when I am most inspired because I find it really beautiful to watch people's brain think in a very creative way. And that kind of gives my brain its own freedom to be creative in its own way. Number 10, sweet or savory? Savory all the way. I rarely have dessert. It's just not something where I'm like, oh, I have to have a dessert. But like savory, I crave it often. Savory and salty. Although I will say it's actually really cute. My daughter, she has dessert every night. And she recently has been like, like without asking or anything, she gets the carton of ice cream out of the freezer, gets two spoons, and then comes and snuggles up with me. And like, without asking, without prompting, brings two spoons because she wants to like share that. So definitely savory, but that has that has been a sweet moment with a sweet treat in my life recently. What is something that makes you smile? I think that I think seeing her want to do that is something that really makes me smile. What is something that people don't know about you? Like close friends know this about me, but not like an average person I have an interaction with. I have a deathly fear of heights. If I have any sort of interaction with heights, it is impeding on what I am doing. Like one of my best friends used to live like outside of New York City. And to get there from here, you have to go over the Bear Bridge which is in like in a suburb of New York City. And I would drive an extra hour just to go around it because driving over bridges is like debilitating to me. Like I freeze, I sweat, I like can't it ugh, it's very debilitating and so like bridges, heights, anything in there is very terrifying for me. And so today, actually, you'll know on the when I recorded this, but the bridge in Baltimore was ran into and collapsed and like, that's not going to help. Thank you. When do you feel most like yourself? I feel most like myself when I am with my best friends. 
Um, I have a group of five best friends from high school and a group of four best friends from college. And when we have girl weekends where we just go rent a place, stay up too late, laugh, cry, do all the things, that's when I feel most like myself. Three things you can't live without. Hmm. What are three things I can't? Pasta. I had pasta for lunch. That's why I was looking over there. Pasta. I can't live without pasta. I... Yeah, I crave it. I have to make it at least like once a week. Fuzzy socks. I love fuzzy socks. Um, I'm always cold naturally. So I am like always wearing fuzzy socks, even like when it's not that cold. And number three, I think, okay, this is going to sound probably weird, but YouTube. Like I always have YouTube. I mean, I was just talking about how I found this questionnaire from Elise Myers on YouTube. Like it's just something that has really like enhanced my life and I frequent it often. Window seat or aisle seat? Window all the time. Favorite TV character? Craig from Parks and Rec. I don't know why. I mean, I think I quote him like every other week. (laughs) I'll just like yell at my sister. (laughs) I'm Miranda in the bedroom and Samantha in the boardroom. It's not ideal, but it's who I am. <laughs> just like his like a date. He just cracks me up every time. Leather or lace? Neither. Uh, I am a vegetarian, so I try not. I try to stay away from leather. Lace doesn't appeal to me, so neither. Most adventurous thing you've ever done? I went to. I went on a European tour. I can't remember the website that I used, but anyways, and I went by myself. I was like, I really want to see Europe. My boyfriend at the time, now husband, had no interest. And I was like, I'm going to go. So I did. And I actually was there for two weeks. We were in Italy, all over Italy, Southern Italy, and then we went to Greece. So we were there for two weeks and I packed a carry-on for the whole time. And it was amazing. Describe yourself in three words. Oof. Uh, again, back to my strength. Empathetic, creative, which is a new one that I wouldn't have said before, and friendly. Favorite piece of clothing that you own? I want to say currently. I mean, I wear this, my, uh, the Hive co-work sweatshirt all the time, but I also have this um, oversized sweatshirt from TikTok, and it's, I'm with the band, and it has all the band books. That's my current favorite article of clothing. What's inspiring you right now? You know, with the algorithm being into like ADHD, I'm really inspired by seeing others like embrace their brain for exactly what it is and use that as their superpower. A good piece of advice you have received. I, this is a piece of advice that came from my podcast interview earlier today. I no longer outsource my self-esteem. So it's not on anybody else. My self-esteem in my self-worth comes for me. Um, diamonds or pearls? Again, neither. Diamonds, I guess. First thing you notice about people. Um, the first thing I notice about people, actually, is if they ask me questions about me. I really dislike when others only talk about themselves and don't. Like, I'll be asking them questions and they won't reflect back. Like, so tell me about you. Tell me, like, more about yourself. Or d- like, that is something I notice quickly about people. It drives me crazy. Something I regret. Kind of buying into, like, the corporate mindset for as long as I did. Sometimes I look back and was like, I can't believe that I was under those beliefs for that long. Music you're currently listening to, Renee Rapp. I love her. I love I love you, Renee. You're amazing. Guilty pleasure. Uh The Bachelor and kind of any of that like type of TV. What makes you feel most accomplished? Hmm. I don't know the answer to that question. What makes me feel most accomplished? When other people listen to my podcast and they give me feedback around how it impacted them. I don't know why. And again, I try not to like use others as like a reflection on me and my accomplishment, but I really like that. How do I start my day? Recently, I, because again, I get into the scroll hole of social media, so I've tried switching it. So as my coffee is brewing, I get up in the morning, get my daughter ready out the door. Then I make a green protein smoothie and 
brew my cup of coffee. And as the coffee is brewing, I play the New York Times game. So I do connections, I do Wordle, I do the spelling bee, and I do the mini crossword. And I really enjoy that because it gets my brain going. I'm still like on my phone, but I'm doing something that feels more productive and also has like an end. So once those are done, now I'm off. Favorite holiday? Hmm, I think Christmas. I really enjoy like buying others gifts. So, and I think like the traditions around it and like the day after Thanksgiving, we go get our Christmas tree. And so the whole time, like leading up to it, I feel like my living room just has a very nice feel to it. Looks or brains? Have you seen my husband? No, just kidding. Obviously, I think he's very handsome. And one of the most attractive things to me about him is like how he thinks so deeply. So who would you like to switch lives with? Mm. I don't know if I like that question. I don't know. For like a day or like ever? It'd be cool to be like an influencer for a day and just see what their day to day is like, but not like a 18 year old influencer, like, like an Elise Myers. Be cool to be Elise for a day. One thing you've always wanted to try. Always. I have ADHD. I've never always wanted to do anything. Like most recently, I've just really wanted to try crocheting. I'm not like in a very like, oh, I always want to try skydiving like that's just not that's not it for me uh favorite card game taco cat goat cheese pizza (laughs) we recently found it and it's hilarious if you've never tried it definitely try it most recent purchase i recently got like some new skincare and i really like that stradia really really enjoying it as far as like an item i got a new purse not that long ago i don't buy a lot of like things Something you wish you knew at 19. It's okay to fail. What do you always carry with you? My wallet. I don't know. Chapstick? Yeah, I'd say chapstick is... I have really chap lips. I don't know why. And I've tried a lot of different like things and tips. I always have dry lips. So chapstick. If you didn't live in New York, where would you live? I always said that I would like to live like... <clears throat> excuse me, in North Carolina, like near the beach, but I think I enjoy the snow too much. Like I like a snowy Christmas. I know like snow and end of March is not ideal. We just got like six inches the other day, but I would never, I wouldn't want to live in like a big city. I wouldn't want to live like out in the middle of nowhere. I would like to be near closer to a nice beach, but I really enjoy the change of seasons as well. When you're in a bad mood, do you want company or alone time? company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alone time just makes me stew on it more. I think best vacation you've ever been on. When I went to Zurich to visit one of my best friends with one of my best friends, uh, we went to Zurich and we went to Prague for the week. And that was the best vacation I've ever been on. We went on one of like the highest bridges in the world in the Swiss Alps. Scariest and best experience I've ever done because it like pushed me and was terrifying, but I'm so glad I didn't. It was beautiful. A city you've always wanted to travel to. I really want to go to the Pacific Northwest and like see more of that. And Lake Como in Italy. I really want to see Lake Como. Something you never travel without. Hmm. I'm not a big like heavy packer. I like, I'm like, here you go. That'll do. But some sort of like camera, I guess. I've always been like a taking pictures type of person, not like a nice camera or anything, but taking pictures and making sure that I have images from the trip when I travel is important to me. Favorite food, pasta. Favorite snack, queso. A movie that makes you cry. I cry at car commercials. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, well, I'm not kidding, but a movie that really oops, makes me cry is, I don't know, they kind of all make me cry. If, if I like need a good cry, I switch more to TV shows like Parenthood or Grey's Anatomy. So I'm going to stay with those. A band you love listening to. I don't know. Are you confrontational? Mm, sometimes. Like I like to talk about it and like clear the air and fix it for next time. But I don't enjoy like confrontation. Like if I need to like return something 
and like tell them, oh, why didn't you like your service or whatever? Like that makes me very uncomfortable. A talent you always wish you had. Singing. I'm not a good singer. And I kind of wish that I was. An exercise you enjoy. Hmm. It's been a struggle of mine recently of, not even recently for a while, of finding an ex, like getting back into enjoying exercise. Um, I really enjoyed CrossFit for a long time when I did it. I really enjoy feeling strong. Do you wish you had any superpowers? I wish I could teleport. That'd be really cool just to be like, I'm here and now I want to be there. What's something you don't want to be doing in 10 years? Hmm. My own accounts payable. <laughs> like, I want to outsource my like billing and taxes and that stuff. What's the cutest thing on earth? The cutest thing on earth. Baby giggles. Is that cliche? Best thing that has happened this year so far. Ooh, best thing that's happened this year so far. 2024. I accepted my ADHD potential diagnosis. I think that's definitely changed my mindset on a lot. Favorite cocktail. I do. I like a vodka and like soda. Uh, Actually, I had a lavender simple syrup vodka soda last summer and it was so delicious. I want to figure out how to make simple syrup after having that. But I also had a tequila Manhattan a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That was really good. A movie that makes you laugh. Wedding Crashers. That is just like one of the, I haven't watched it in a while, but like I laughed at that movie for years. My God. What's usually for dinner? I love doing like a sheet roast pan. (laughs) Like I just put a bunch of vegetables and like tofu and sometimes I'll do chicken nuggets for my daughter on it. And then olive oil, season, throw it in the oven for like 30 minutes. That's And then do like some sort of dipping aioli. That's my favorite. Do you believe in second chances? Yeah, I do. What's your ideal vacation? Depends on what I'm looking for. Like I love, I want to go back to Italy and like sightsee and like learn about the history and things like that. But I love a good beach vacation. Put me on a beach with a book and the ocean. I'm in. What's your favorite thing? My family. What's one thing you love a lot? My family. (laughs) Favorite color is like a teal, like a Tiffany blue teal turquoise. Color you wear most often, black. I'm I'm always in black. I have so many, like a lot of times when I'm on calls, it looks like I'm wearing the same because I have like four black sweatshirts with a little tie around it. Yeah, I wear a lot of black. Describe living in New York in three words. Like a beautiful, the change in seasons I think is beautiful. It's diverse. Like the fact that you can, like in New York state, you can hit, like you get to go to the Finger Lakes and you can get to be in major metropolitans is really cool. And like New York City and Long Island obviously are very different than upstate New York. So there's a lot of diversity and it is like upstate New York has like a bit of New York, but a bit of Midwest, I think. Do you like surprises? Yes, I do. I do like surprises. I'll probably cry, but I do like surprises. A lesson you learned the hard way. I like to learn lessons the hard way a lot. But I will say, what is a lesson I learned the hard way? Uh, That you can ask for help. Doesn't mean you did it wrong. Something you're tired of. Like struggling with money and being able to wrap my head around money. Who do you turn to when you're sad? I turn to my family, you know, like when we like, I didn't think we were going to get this house. I called like my sister and I called my dad and like, yeah, so I think I turn to my family and sometimes that's my husband, depending on (laughs) the topic, a trend that you'd like to see disappear forever. Low rise jeans. Oh, thank you. Least favorite food. Like I only like fresh peas. like out of the garden. I don't like getting peas in other form. Lima beans. No, thank you. It's 4 p.m. on a random Saturday. What are you doing? Probably watching. Depends on the season. If it's lacrosse season, I'm probably a lacrosse. Um, But out of that, I'm probably, like if it's summer, I'm probably in my garden or hanging out in the living room with my family. Ideal date. Like October 4th. (laughs) Just kidding. Uh, Ideal date is... My husband and I, sometimes we like to get subs and then we go to like a park, like on the water and do that. 
So something in like nature and food, I would say. What lipstick do you do do you use? I don't really use lipstick. I don't really like lipstick. I'm just a kind of chapstick it up kind of person. What am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing tomorrow? Ooh, actually, my daughter's in a musical tomorrow. She's not very excited about it, but I'm excited. She doesn't really like being on stage, but I'm excited to see her. This is like her third kind of like on stage performance that she's had to do for school. And every time she's like hated it leading up to it. And then afterwards was like, okay, that wasn't so bad. So if she still like hates it after this, I won't sign her up for these have all been school. Like she's had to kind of do it, but tomorrow afternoon I get to go see her be in a musical and I think it'll be really cute. Thank you for this much longer than anticipated answer the Vogue questions with me, but I thought it was, it'd be kind of cool. Again, this podcast has allowed me to just explore my creative side. I was really inspired by Elise in doing it. It felt like a cool way to get to know her. And I hope that you got to know me a little bit better. And thank you for sticking around if you're still here. I would love it if you would subscribe, rate the podcast on whatever player you are listening to it because that just helps the algorithm say you enjoy this type of content or share it on your social media. Next week is a really exciting episode. I interview Diane Wingert, who is a psychotherapist turned ADHD coach for entrepreneurs. So we have this fascinating conversation. A lot of entrepreneurs that I work with are either self-diagnosed or diagnosed from a doctor with ADHD. And the you come into all new struggles when you are neurodivergent and trying to build a business. So we have the coolest conversation. I really hope to have you tune in next week. Until next time, remember that big dreams and small steps will transform your life. Greatest.